Hey guys, Captain Dylan Hubbard here at Hubbard's Marina with our Sunday night live stream fishing show. Appreciate y'all tuning in and joining us for our live stream show every Sunday night. Again, Captain Dylan Hubbard here at Hubbard's Marina. We're going to get started here very shortly. We just got to get logged into Facebook. Remember, if you're watching this live, we start in about uh, 8.30. If you're not watching this live, go ahead and skip forward until you see the video start. Captain Dylan Hubbard from Hubbard's Marina. Hubbard's Marina has been fishing local waters over 90 years and four generations. Tons of fishing tips, tricks, and more in this video. Highly recommend you stay tuned. Sit back, relax, and get ready for a great show. We're going to get rolling here on Facebook and give it some time for more people to tune in. And uh, then we'll get rolling, guys. Thanks for joining us. Happy Sunday night, guys. Captain Dylan Hubbard here at Hubbard's Marina. Thank you all for hanging out with us for another Sunday night live stream fishing conversation Q&A show here at Hubbard's Marina. Remember, we do these shows every Sunday night, so I appreciate you tuning in for our 8.30 p.m. Sunday night show. Tonight we've got a great show lined up, lots of fishing tips, tricks, a uh, whole bunch of different stuff we're going to share with you. We're going to show you what we've been catching, what we plan to catch, and all the upcoming events. We're going to share some really cool information with you guys and uh, give you a bunch of secrets, tips, tricks, and more to hopefully help you catch more fish. Captain Dylan Hubbard here from Hubbard's Marina, your Sunday night host. We've got a lot of cool stuff to share with you tonight, guys. And uh, Hubbard's Marine has been fishing local waters over 90 years and four generations. And tonight we're going to be sharing a lot of that information with you. So thank you all for tuning in. We're going to get started here around 830. Remember, if you're watching this live, just bear with us. We'll get started here soon. If you're not watching this live... Uh, go ahead and skip forward to where you see the video start. I appreciate everybody hanging out with us tonight. We got lots of cool stuff to go over here and uh, a lot of uh, good catches to look at, man. We've been catching some nice fish out there and uh, the fishing is great. The weather is gorgeous. We're going to talk a little bit about that and more tonight during the show. Hopefully you guys have some fishing comments and questions for me. Remember, you can share your questions in the comment box, and I will answer them during the show. Remember, we're going to give away some free fishing trips. We do this every Sunday night, 8.30 p.m. If you want a chance to win some free fishing trips, all you have to do is sign into Facebook. And once you're on Facebook, search for Hubbard's Marina. Once you're on the Hubbard's Marina page, you'll see our live video show up. You can comment one time on that live video, and it enters you in a chance to win some free fishing trips. We're going to give away a five-hour half day for two, a 10-hour all day for two, and we're going to give away a 39-hour fishing trip, either a big discount, 50% off a 39-hour trip, or a free 39-hour trip if we reach 300 live viewers. So either a half off at 39 hour or a free 39 hour is coming soon. So definitely stay tuned tonight. Got to be tuned in to win. Can't win those free trips unless you're watching live. We're going to share some more information on that during the show. We got lots of photos and videos to share tonight and uh, some cool stuff along those lines as well, guys. Red snapper season is in full swing. Common misconception is red snapper season ends here shortly in mid-July. That is not true. At Hubbard's Marina on our federally permitted four hire vessels, our red snapper season goes all the way through end of day, August 1st. So August 1st is that unicorn day where everything in the Gulf of Mexico is open to harvest except for those gray trigger fish. Amberjack opens August 1st, so with Red Snapper overlapping that, it's going to be pretty darn cool. So hopefully uh, you guys are all looking forward to a great show tonight. I got lots of cool photos, videos, and information to share with you. 
We got our brand new Salt Strong thing uh, launched. Got a really cool way for you guys to check out Salt Strong at a huge discount. Uh, so really cool info there from our friends at Salt Strong. Hopefully everybody's been catching some nice fish and uh, venting the fish that they are going to release. I'm going to talk a little bit about venting tonight too. We're going to get rolling here in just about four minutes. So just giving some time for people to get tuned in here. And uh, uh, once we get tuned in, we will get started here. We just need a few minutes before we get rolling. Now, I know it's a good Sunday night for me. I had a great Sunday. Our 39 hour came in this morning. They had a big old pile of fish. So it was a great start to our Sunday. Hopefully everybody out there is having a great Sunday as well. Um, hopefully everybody's going fishing because the fishing is great right now. The weather is great right now and it's a good time to get offshore there. I'm looking at the weather now. It just looks spectacular for the coming week. Uh, really nothing in sight here that worries me. Um, so it's going to be beautiful here. I mean, flat calm conditions. It's almost too calm right now. It's been like a lake out in the Gulf of Mexico. Nuts for sure. So some beautiful weather to say the least and uh, some more great weather ahead. Uh, we are in our summertime weather pattern so we're seeing a lot of those thunderstorms, those afternoon thunderstorms uh, rolling in so people always uh, are scared when they see that chance of rain but that chance of rain means nothing. Often we'll have 40, 50, 60 percent chance of rain almost every day uh, in the state of Florida during the summer. And um, most of the time, you don't even get any rain. So it's uh, pretty funny how that works. Essentially, that chance of rain means there's a 50 percent chance that somewhere in that nine county viewing area is going to get some uh, rain at some point during the day. So definitely nothing to worry about there. Uh, as far as rain chances are concerned. So don't let the rain scare you. If you didn't go outside, if you didn't go outside when it had a chance of rain, you would uh, never go outside in the sun of the state of Florida. Everybody can hear me okay. If you can't hear me, leave a comment. Uh, hopefully everybody can hear me all right. Make sure you comment where you're watching from. Make sure you share the video with friends, like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, check us out on Instagram, and tonight we're going to share another way that you can stay even more connected with me, so really, really cool stuff. I don't know how many of you guys are familiar with Salt Strong, but we're going to go all into that tonight and show you all the cool stuff Salt Strong has come up with. They've got a cool page built out just for Hubbard's Marina and just for the Hubbard's Marina fans. So we're going to show some of that tonight and uh, show you guys our little uh, secret area inside the Salt Strong community. So not only are we talking fishing, but we're talking fishing tips, tricks, and answering your questions. Remember, if you have a question, leave it in the comment box, and uh, I will answer it the best I can through the show. Uh, we got some good questions rolling in already. Uh, Rashid Muhammad on YouTube uh, giving some good questions. Hopefully, everybody shares their fishing questions. Um, and uh, I will do my best to answer them through the show. We're going to get started here in just a second. Um, just getting our final touches put on here. And uh, then we'll get rolling. Hopefully everybody's checked out our, um, checked out our, uh, 
our new our new uh, Bull Bay Hubbard's Marina rods. If you haven't checked out those Bull Bay Hubbard's Marina rods, hopefully you'll have a chance to sometime soon here. But I think it's ready to get. I think we're ready to get started. Hopefully, uh, you guys are ready to get started. All right, let's get rolling. Let's kick this thing off. How are you guys doing? Thanks for tuning in tonight. Again, Captain Dylan Hubbard here at Hubbard's Marina for our Sunday night live stream show. We're going to talk a little bit about fishing, tips, tricks, and more. We're going to tell you what's been going on here at Hubbard's Marina, what we've been catching. We're going to show you some cool videos and uh, show you what's been going on around Hubbard's Marina uh, first things first, let's dive into some photos and look at what we've been catching. Uh, we're going to start off here inshore this time. We're going to shake it up a little bit. We're going to talk uh, to Brian, our uh, master at Catch and Bait, and he's going to share a little bit of his inshore fishing tips and tricks. Then we're going to work offshore and talk, uh, look at our 12-hour extreme trips and what we've been catching on there, and we're going to... Uh, look at some 39 hour photos and see what we've been catching on that 39 hour trip we're going to try to get captain anthony on the phone he's been uh, super super busy but hopefully he'll have a chance to chat with us there uh, but i know he's working on the boat so no guarantees but let's get right into it and uh, look at what we've been seeing inshore inshore so here is a nice trout a speckled trout these things are really, really good eating. They are catch and release only until the end of May 2020, uh, but it's still a great uh, great time out in the water to go target these uh, trout. Super, super, super important trout, redfish, snook, and really all fish that you handle them very carefully, especially trout. They're kind of a weak fish. Uh, if you beat them up out of the water, hold them out of the water too long, they just, they can't handle it. They just perish really easily so make sure you get your hands wet before you grab any fish that you plan to release especially trout make sure you don't hold them out of the water too long uh, but these things are biting well along the deeper grass flats kind of hanging off the edges of the grass flats ambushing bait getting pushed off the flat at uh, either incoming or outgoing tide you really got to look at your spots and the geographics of your spot and look at how the tide pushes bait across that flat. Essentially, all these big game fish that we fish for, uh, inshore and offshore, are predator fish, and they're uh, opportunistic. They want to ambush their prey. So these things are sitting on the deeper side of the flat or the drop-off of the flat, waiting for that bait to get pushed to them by the tide or current. So these trout are feeding well on the sandy drop-offs around the pass. Like in John's Pass, we have those jetties, and then you uh, walk out on the jetty a little bit. You can see how the sand goes about 6 to 10 feet, and then all of a sudden there's a pretty steep drop. That's where those trout are hanging. They're waiting for those little white baits to go off that drop-off, and they're able to ambush them. Trout bite really well at night inside John's Pass and around John's Pass on those dock lights where that water's moving and attracting those baits to the light. Uh, and then during the day, they're out on those deeper grass flats ambushing bait. But beautiful, uh, nice speckled trout from our Salt Strong Insider Club. In a little bit, we're going to show you all about that Salt Strong Insider Club and how you can join uh, our Hubbard's Marina Insider Club in Salt Strong at a discounted rate. So stay tuned for that. And we're going to give away free trips too, so don't forget about that. Uh, here is a nice little redfish caught on our dock at Hubbard's Marina. Keep in mind, a lot of people ask, you can fish our dock at Hubbard's Marina. Uh, you just uh, need to do it during the day while we're open. As long as we're not actively loading or unloading a boat, you're welcome to fish on our dock next to our dock or on the catwalk. If we're really, really busy and we're loading or offloading a boat, we might tell you to move to a certain area of the dock or move off the dock for a little bit. But you're more than welcome to fish the dock, especially in the morning when we're slower. There's tons of room, and it's great fishing. 
Now at night, the dock is closed. It's no trespassing. Uh, but at night, you can pull up in a boat if you have a boat. And the snook are stacked under our dock and all the docks through John's Pass. This morning, Brian, our bait guy, and I were walking down the boardwalk uh, talking about catching bait and inshore fishing. And we were just spotting massive amounts of snook cruising the dock lines of John's Pass. And every pass is like that, too. Uh, but the redfish have been biting well around the structures, the docks, the jetties, the bridges. On the bottom, big live shrimp seems to be working well. Then in the bay, Weeden Island area, Fort DeSoto area, up in the mangrove edges, the oyster bars, the redfish are going pretty well. But redfish are fairly few and far between right now. Now, the snook, on the other hand, the exact opposite. Snook are prolific in our passes. If you don't have a boat, you can't go offshore fishing with us all the time. Snook are a great option starting around mid to late May when the water starts warming up all the way through end of July. The snook fishing is nuts. Right now in John's Pass, anybody can catch a snook. Uh, it's really, really, really easy. Uh, they're that thick right now, especially in that uh, the end of the outgoing or beginning of the outgoing tide or through uh, the incoming tide with the live bait. Brian's going to talk more about the snook fishing, so I don't want to take it much away from that. But at night, that's when the big dogs coming out to play. This guy is John Sasser. He fishes the north jetty of John's Pass religiously. If you see him out there, talk to him. Tell him uh, I said hello and uh, try to uh, pick up a conversation with him because he is a snook ninja staying up all night catching tons of those snook on those uh, flare hawk jigs you can work that flare hawk jig real slowly above the water or above the bottom and those snook come up and ambush it the trick is to work it with the tide you have to present your bait naturally it's the same thing offshore you have to work with the tide not against it if your bait isn't presented nat naturally whether you're working a lure inshore, working a lure offshore, or presenting that dead bait to that ledge that you want to hook up on, you have to present your bait naturally. And for these snook with these flare hawks, that means casting into the tide, working the lure with the tide, and then just slowly retrieving that flare hawk just above the bottom. Uh, the faster the current, the heavier the jig, about a one ounce jig, is a popular size, but anywhere to half ounce once that tide starts slowing down. But another John's Pass Snook, lots of John's Pass Snook by John Sasser and his buddies. The Redfish is another one from Glenn. Some nice Redfish, some nice Snook. Long story short, the inshore fishing is going pretty well right now. The summertime is a great time for snook fishing inshore. Uh, we're going to talk to Brian here, and Brian's going to share even more information on inshore snook fishing and more. How you doing, Brian? Oh, doing pretty good. So uh, I know you've been doing a lot of inshore fishing lately, and I've seen some of those big snook that you've been catching out there. Uh, so how's it going? Oh, the snook fishing so easy right now. If you can't catch a snook right now, just stop fishing. <laughs> that's, that's how easy it is. <laughs> really? It's so safe. most of the time you're catching those snook when? Um, I really like fishing on tides more than time of day. Uh, I like to fish uh, beginning and end of outgoing with the pass crabs. And if you hit those tides right when it first starts rolling, you see those first couple crabs come by, you'll, you'll destroy them. And then the end of outgoing, it's like they realize the crowds are start, stopping the flush, and they'll do one more big feeding frenzy. Nice. And then uh, I like fishing the whole incoming with grunts and pinfish, so. Okay. So yeah. incoming tide, you're using more of the pinfish or yes, grunts, sir. and the outgoing tide, you're using more pass crabs. Yeah. What about lures? Do you use any lures? You know, uh, I used to be strictly lures, basically, and not because... Guys, I'm seeing a lot of questions here. Uh, about snook, redfish, and trout, they are closed right now until end of May 2020. So snook, redfish, trout in our region, the Tampa Bay region, are closed to harvest. You can't harvest snook, redfish, and trout, but you can go catch and release them. And it's still a great time to go out there and have fun catching and releasing these fish. They're a lot of fun. They fight hard. 
And uh, when they open back up, they're good to eat too if you catch one in that slot size. Oops, hit the wrong button. <laughs> I like lures more but because it was way more convenient. But now that I'm doing this bait thing full time, I end up using the only live bait. I haven't thrown a lure since I started working here. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you catching all that live bait for us. You have it yeah, right in your boat. Yeah, got to keep my little bit of private stash going. There you it's go. A big grunt. All right, cool. Yeah. And then uh, anything else? I've been seeing a lot of redfish here off our dock and around some of the docks in the past. Are you seeing any? Um, you know, redfish have been kind of scarce for me. I haven't been targeting them that hard, but uh, wow. I have a lot of friends up the bay, Weedon Island area, all of that. There, there's always reds over there, pretty solid. I haven't, uh, give it a couple more months and we'll get a big population of fish coming into Bay Pines and Jungle Parada and this Bogus Diego area. Okay. But right now I'm seeing mostly smaller fish, so. Yeah, what I've seen caught here on the dock was mostly live shrimp on the bottom and they were yeah. smaller redfish. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, that's good. In the Bay, Weedon Island area, you're saying kind of like those mangroves areas? Yeah, you'll, you'll find a school of boats and you're in the right place. <laughs> Dead yeah. bait seems to be the ticket. And then uh, inshore grouper fishing's kind of been my passion since everything else is closed down. I've always been uh, I've always been fishing for meat. So now that you're not really able to keep much, I focus on sheepshead and grouper this time of year. I know so. the gags. There's that one guy, Charles Barat or Brat, uh, who's been slaying the gags at the Skyway. Yeah. Have you been catching any? Yeah, I've been getting some. Uh, I fish more docks and uh, passes that have like, I f find small wrecks, pick them up on my fish finder. Yeah, I try to stay away from the main bridges. Yeah. There's some little bridges you'd look at and say there's no way there's a grouper under there and pull keepers out of it. So. Yeah. I've got a few bridges that hold some keeper gags. In yeah. The yeah, those are sacred. You gotta oh, yeah. <laughs> keep those on the down low. Yeah, we don't share those nope. on video. Now, uh, inshore gag fishing is almost the same as offshore gag fishing, right? You know, what I like to do is, uh, what's hard is you're casting out, so you get a big gag when you're casting out, it has all those opportunities to duck and rock, so learning how, I would say, instead of big boying them in, a lot of times it's working them through the rock slowly, Yeah. because you'll end up breaking off every time you try to crank one in and it dives in a rock. What do you mean by working them in? Use lighter um, tackle? I use, like, you know, 8,000 spinning gear with 60 pound leader. And uh, I don't use heavy weight. I use, even if it's ripping current, I use a split shot. Okay. And uh, when you hook them, you know they're in the rock. You just give them some slack. If that doesn't work, you get a little pressure on there and do a little banjo thing with the line. And that seems to talk them out of there. There you go. So, kind of annoys them, I think. Yeah, it does drive them crazy, so. All right, so we've talked about snook, redfish, grouper. I know the mangrove bite, the mangroves have been coming back in the yeah. past. Up the bay, it's crazy right now in that skyway, that area. It's been great. A lot um, of mangroves. Yeah, I love, uh, September is my favorite time of year because every one of these bridges is going to be loaded in the next, I'd say in the next month, you'll start seeing big numbers show up, good ones. Okay. So. And for those inshore mangroves, uh, like 20 pound leader, two odd hook, and a piece of shrimp? Yeah, I usually use a uh, um, eight ounce jig head personally, and uh, probably a 10 foot, 15 to 20 pound leader. And uh, I always go out and cast out a whole bucket full of white bait and uh, cut a ton of it up and chum like crazy until you get the bite going. Mm -hmm. Just keep that school fired up right there. So, so pieces of white bait is what you prefer? Yeah, yeah. Or sometimes okay. I use live white bait, we'll chum them with the dead, just, it'll trigger a better bite. So. All right, cool. Yep. Any other parting tips or tricks? Um, yeah, there's snook. Take advantage of it right now. I just walked the boardwalk right here at John's Pass. Saw probably three or four hundred. At Don's dock, I was hand feeding them pinfish as they were swimming by. Wow. That's a, that's how crazy it is right now. I know so. this morning and almost every morning that I come out here on our dock and around the bridge, you yeah. can hear them popping. Oh yeah, they're popping small little glass minnows though. So I would say. For that, you might need some small artificials or something, something you can, like a little, uh, a little like crankbait you can rip through there real quick. So match the hatch. Yep, exactly. All right, man. Yeah. Well, I appreciate your time, Brian. Good. Have a good day. Cheers. All right, that was Brian with a little inshore report. I did get one good inshore fishing question during that video that I'm gonna answer real quick before we get offshore. But keep in mind, guys, all your questions that you're posting in the comments. 
I'm getting some really great questions. And as we go through the show, I answer your questions, especially towards the end of the show, we strictly go to start answering those questions. So don't think I'm ignoring you. If I didn't answer your question yet, definitely going to uh, get to your questions here soon. But that inshore question before we get moving on is the question was, if snook, redfish, and trout are closed to harvest, you have to catch and release them, what can you target that you can actually keep inshore? And right now, a great option is those mangrove snapper. The mangrove snapper start uh, coming out of those estuaries this time of year, and they start swimming offshore as the spawn kind of progresses. So a lot of those little 10, 11, 12, 14 inch mangrove snapper are swimming out of those back mangrove bays and estuaries and heading to the passes around the Skyway, the rocks uh, in Tampa Bay, the big uh, reef sites around the mouth of the bay, a lot of the bridges like John's Pass Bridge. Sand Key Bridge and those jetties are holding mangrove snapper, which is a great, great fun, light tackle, little piece of shrimp or a piece of a green back. You can chum them up when the tide is slack, and then when that outgoing tide starts, those fish are already kind of schooled up, ready to chew. They're a lot of fun on super light tackle because uh, they bite quickly. I like using a, either a free line bait or a really light split shot. Essentially, you want the lightest possible bait, and you want to let it kind of float down in the water just like your chum. So right at the tail end of the slack tide, start chumming it up a little bit, and then right as that water starts moving, start fishing it, and you'll start catching them. As the water starts to speed up, you might have to use a split shot. Then once that current starts running too quickly, you're not going to be able to catch them. So that's kind of a great way to target something you can eat inshore from the uh, docks, jetties, bridges, or the gag grouper. Right now, a lot of gag grouper keeper-sized gags are being caught around the bridges and the Skyway Bridge and the Skyway Fishing Piers. But as the water cools off, those gags will start coming in closer, and you'll see more and more keeper-sized gags around uh, the bridges and jetties. Uh, so it's a great time to go after those uh, snapper or grouper inshore. Also whiting out in the beach. Whiting and silver trout are being caught too. So there's a lot of different fish that you can keep uh, inshore while those snook, redfish, and trout are closed. Also mackerel. Seen a lot of mackerel around the bait schools, especially in the morning when that white bait is up on the beach. Great time to target those mackerel as well. Now, uh, here real quickly, wanted to show you what we ran across on the 12-hour trip. Uh, Smokey, our uh, favorite <laughs> funny guy on the crew, uh, sent me these cool photos of a whale shark. Uh, the friendly fisherman, our party boat, ran across this, well, not ran across it, ran next to uh, this nice whale shark, big old monster whale shark on that 12-hour party boat trip today, cruising along. Uh, we've been seeing a lot of these whale sharks around lately, so it was really, really cool to see one cruise up to the boat and get a really cool photo of it. So definitely keep your eyes peeled for those whale sharks while you're out there. Typically, those whale sharks have cobia following them. So most of the time when you see a whale shark, besides grabbing, excuse me, besides grabbing your camera, you also want to be grabbing a rod to pitch out a tail hooked pinfish or a little bucktail white jig with a long green eel worm, soft plastic worm on it. Uh, so that way you can sight cast for those cobia that typically follow those whale sharks. Uh, but let's get into the 12 hour extreme, show you what that thing's been catching. They've been catching some awesome fish on that 12 hour extreme trip. Here is a monster red snapper caught with heavy tackle, 100 pound test, big 10 out hook, big piece of dead bait that, uh, big red snapper have been loving the dead bait. Here's Donnie Rife and his group on a Flying Hub 1 private charter. Nice red snapper from that one. Kyle uh, with a nice gag from the Flying Hub 2. Some more red snapper, some gags, some big gags. Nice red snapper. You can see the thread fin bait. Uh, the dead bait has been going well out there for the red snapper and gags. Whether that's thread fin, bonita, uh, mackerel chunks uh, or other fish like porgies that were um, that were uh, butterflying out uh, or just the dead thread fins or squid strip 
basically any big chunk of dead bait on the bottom has been working well for those red snapper and gags out in deeper water. Now this was pretty unique, nice little hogfish brought up there. We have those pass crabs uh, and those pass crabs work well for big fat red grouper, big hogfish. Uh, this guy was caught on a small pinfish. We see some big hogfish caught on those small pinfish. Uh, but overall, it's been a great time out there on that 12 hour extreme, catching a nice variety of fish and uh, catching some big boys too. So nice big old gag here with Jim Kendall, uh, one of our regulars club members. Some nice mangroves mixed in. Don't forget about those mangroves. Mangrove bite has been a little tough lately, but we've been catching them here and there. Even on that 39 hour trip, that 44 hour trip, it's been a little tough on the mangroves occasionally. Uh, but we're starting to get into them. Garrett's going a little deeper on this uh, 39 hour private charter that we had leave today. And we're hoping he finds the big old mother load of those mangrove snapper. But the gags, uh, for a time of year where gags normally don't bite that well, we have been seeing some nice gags lately. But the gags are out in deeper water. You have to be at least 160 foot to start seeing those gags, 150, 160 foot to start seeing those nice gags consistently at least. Uh, but once you get out 180, 200 foot, that's where you start to see more consistent gag grouper and the bigger fish. Uh, and that's where we're seeing the biggest red snapper too, definitely out there in deeper water. The deeper you go, the better the gag bite, the bigger the red snapper, and the higher the chance you're going to run across those scamp grouper too. So definitely 180, 200 foot plus is where you want to be if you want to catch those big ones. So that is why our 12 hour extreme and our 39 hour trips are what we recommend for those red snapper uh, this time of year. Because if you want big red snapper, you want a lot of red snapper, you want a chance for gag grouper, you got to do a 12 hour extreme or a 39 hour trip. We have tons of room on our 39 hour trips. Uh, towards the uh, beginning of red snapper season, most of our 39 hour trips were sold out. But for some reason, we've had a lot of people move around and we have a lot of openings, especially on our Tuesday 39 hours. We have a good amount of opening on our Sunday 39 hour trips. Our Friday trips are a little bit more full, but still got plenty of room if you want to hop on there and get a chance for those big gags or big red snapper. Let's get into our 39 hour photos. Some of these are a little blurry, but I just wanted to show you the full gambit of these photos. We got a lot of them to show you because we're running 39 hour trips every Sunday, Tuesday, and Friday. We've been seeing some nice pelagics out there on that 39 hour trip. Here's a nice black fin tuna, a nice red snapper, red snapper, red snapper, nice kingfish that got cut off a little bit. There's a nice kingfish. Definitely been seeing kingfish tuna uh, on the troll. We did catch a uh, wahoo on the troll. And then we're seeing the kingfish and tuna and even mahi-mahi on the flat line. So really good time to get out there and go get some pelagics. A lot of uh, sargasm weed and weed lines out there, making it a great time to troll during the day. Uh, trigger fish are closed for harvest right now, but we do catch them occasionally still too. It's a nice red grouper, there's a red snapper. There's a nice scamp. We've been seeing some of these scamp out there during the day. Basically what these 39 hour trips do is we start fishing around midnight uh, and midnight 1 a.m. a little bit shallower, like uh, anywhere from 140 to about 160 foot. Target those, red, uh, those mangrove snapper and uh, a lot of those smaller fish like uh, porgies. Uh, vermilions, but we really have our heart set on those mangroves through the night. And then as sunrise approaches, we push out deeper uh, to the 160, 180, 200, 200 foot plus areas. And that's when we start targeting those red snapper, gag grouper, and then we get those scant mixed in. Here's a big gag from this morning's trip, 33.1 pound gag grouper, and then a big red snapper too. Those were our jackpot winners from this morning's 39 hour trip. Nice big old black fin tunas, some nice gags, red snappers, mangrove snapper, gags, full box. Definitely a great time. Nice scant, some big red snapper, 
trigger fish catch and release. I mean, look at these photos, guys. If that doesn't make you want to get out there on that 39-hour trip, I don't know what will. But here is that big 33.1-pound gag grouper that we caught on this weekend's 39-hour trip. This thing came in this morning. Just an absolute animal of a fish. Beautiful catch. This guy was uh, caught on a rental rod and reel. This gentleman's first trip out with us. Never been to Hubbard's Marina before. Rented a rod. We supplied a rod reel and all his tackle. And he used that Bass Pro Shops Offshore Angler Sea Fire reel and hauled in this trophy gag grouper. So pretty awesome to see a first-time angler out with us catch such a beautiful fish. Nice kingfish on the troll, some gag action, another kingfish on the troll. Great time out in the water right now, especially out in that deeper water. A lot of pelagics. There's what the troll was uh, working, that Rapala X-Wrap. That's a green mackerel Rapala X-Wrap. Pretty nice little shot of the trolling lure there. Uh, now we're going to show you here uh, the pile from our 39 hour catch see if I can't make this pop up and where is it gonna pop up there it is alright so let's show you what we caught on that 39 hour trip here is the catch from that trip good morning guys Captain Dylan Hubbard here at Hubbard's Marina with another nice 39 hour fishing trip and a great catch of fish check out this big old gag here monster gag nice one some nice tuna some king some big red snapper some big mangroves scamp a little bit of everything here nice pile of fish how you doing will uh pretty good just getting back from this sucker uh we had to work for the mangroves at night again i think we're going to try a little deeper this trip uh we leave again today for those mangroves see if they're a little thicker out there but uh, good on the daytime fishing again. We hit one really good spot where we got a lot of these big red snappers that gag and most of the gag came off one spot and uh, Good fishing again out there Ran into a little bit of the doldrums in the afternoon where it just gets too calm and no wind the boat just floats around hard to anchor But uh, other than that great trip great weather Nice so you had flat calm conditions, huh? Flat, too calm at the end of the late <laughs> afternoon there is such thing as too calm. So that was no anchor heading, no current. Fish just kind of quit biting on us. Yeah, we catch a couple here and there, but when the current's not going, they just swim around in all directions. When the current's going, they're all looking that way into yeah. the current. So we like a little bit of current out there, not too much, but a little. Yeah, it's a delicate balance. So I see some nice pelagic fish, some kingfish, some tuna. How are they biting this trip? Uh, we call the tuna and the king, one, the smaller king trolling, and uh, there was a bait ball the size of the boat, literally like 20 feet from the boat, getting hit by fish, and a guy caught the big king fish over there, while that bait ball was right beside the boat, and he was hitting it, so I feel like that king fish was on that bait ball too. Nice, nice. You got him on a flat line? He was there. Yeah. yeah. Just dropping down, got him on the bottom rig, huh? He's probably a 30 pounder. Yeah, that's a nice king. Some other nice kings over there too. So, uh, good, decent pelagic bite, decent mangrove bite, decent red snapper bite, nice tuna. All around good trip. Good trip, we're going to call that monster a 30, 30 pound grouper right now. It may be a little bigger. Yeah, that's a monster grouper for sure. All right, cool, man. Thanks, Will. Nice pile All right, guys, of fish. Nice catch of fish for sure. Another nice 39 hour trip. We got a He might make thirty. He might make thirty-five. He's thick up in the shoulders. 
I was thinking he might make 35 when he cleared the rail. It feels like it, too. That's what I was thinking. I was pretty dead gum close, I say. 33 one. Probably when he came over the rail, he was 35. He probably lost a couple pounds. Okay. So I'm pretty good at spotting him. Leo, all right, here we are. <laughs> we got two jackpot contenders by one angler. We got a grouper we just weighed in. Two anglers. Two anglers? Two anglers. Oh, okay, that's your buddy's fish? Yeah. Okay, well, we got two anglers. The, the grouper just weighed in, as you can see it. Oh, uh, sorry about that, guys. I didn't realize the sound was off. Uh, essentially, I was just talking about how we're going to show you some videos now and uh, how... Uh, how uh, the 39 hour trip did so well and how we're going to show you a little bit more about that 39 hour trip then we're going to get into your questions sorry about that guys you can hear me now though right i hope everybody can hear me now <laughs> can you hear me now test 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 someone let me know if they can hear me 33 a little shy over 33 pounds we don't know about the red snapper yet, but they could be partners in crime here and stealing a jackpot. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. They did a great job. Did you have a good time, sir? Uh, I'm, I'm going to ask you a I'm very Google obvious Google question. Did you have a good time? I had a great time. I think, great you're, time. Uh, I I think you're about to pay for your trip. $290. Or at least a good chunk of it. For the winners today. There you go. <laughs> oh, yeah. So are you going to cut? Is this your first trip to Hubbard's? Yes. A first trip? That's what I thought. I'd say, you're, I'd say you're off to a good start. Beautiful, man. Thank you. So, I think it. I think it's safe to say you might be coming back one day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, because I usually take my boat. I usually right. take my boat out, but this year, like, man, it's a lot of work. It takes a lot of work, a lot of prep, a lot of time. Yeah. So I wanted to try it. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. 16, there's the um, 16, red five. snapper, 16, yeah, no, 5. Man, well, I, yeah, good luck. I appreciate it. It looks like the flipper had a hold of him. It does. Nice fish for sure. Beautiful catch some nice fish from that 39 hour trip sorry about the loss of sound there guys uh smoky had called me while we were watching the video and i muted my mic so i could talk to smoky on the phone and uh then when the video ended forgot to unmute myself so my bad yo <laughs> here is a nice uh showing of that red snapper action essentially we get those red snapper fired up out there in that deeper water and then all of a sudden people are catching them left right left right so John's walking around the boat as we catch some nice red snapper, and then a big one comes up. Check this out. All right. This is our first of the deeper drop stops. That's there. We're picking up some red snapper pretty much across the board here. Nice, great right here. Yeah, absolutely. Lot. Beautiful fish, beautiful fish. We're going to keep trucking around here, see if we can get somebody catching one on video. Here's a couple just came up. Red snapper around. You got a fish on, sir? Which one, Leo? A long ways down. Here we go. We got color on a red snapper. Ice fish. And a, and some tangled up line. Hang on. Jason, we got a. Decent red snapper and a bunch of tangles right here. Can I slide by y'all? So Let me slide by you, please. Yeah. Yeah. Really? My Monster red the snapper there. There's a 20. That's close to it. Nice fish. 
high school. Red snapper coming up everywhere. Nice. That thing's gorgeous. Beautiful fish. Yeah, that's why I want to get past. Littered. The deck is littered with red snapper. You see that? That is that was a great bite of fish. It takes a while to get those fish all chummed up like that. Now, right now, guys, we're at 250 live viewers. We just need 50 more people to tune in, and we're going to give away a free 39-hour trip. Right now, we're giving away a five-hour half day for two, 10-hour all day for two, and then a 39-hour trip at 50% off. But we're at 260 live viewers now, so 40 more people, and you guys are getting a free 39-hour trip. So make sure you comment on the video, like and share the video, and uh, that'll help us get to that 300 live viewer mark. So here's some nice big tuna out action on the troll from that 39-hour trip. Once we watch this video, we're going to get into your questions. But here's a big tuna gaffed on the troll. Special video now this is a great little uh showing here you can see the reels they're using these are 50 wide two, uh, two speed trolling reels these are big reels and a lot of people say do i need a fighting belt do i need a harness you can see most people just leave the rod right in the rod holder as they retrieve that fish so you don't need a fighting belt you don't need anything special to troll on the 39 hour except for a really bad to the bone trolling reel and trolling rod what i like doing myself is i like uh grabbing a 50 or 80 wide two speed reel and then i put it on a bottom fishing rod like a solid glass blank or one of our bull bay rods that way i can troll with it and then when I'm done trolling, I can cut the trolling tackle off and use it for big amberjack or big gag grouper out on the bottom too. A nine knot works, but it's kind of not the best option. The two speed 50 wide or 80 wide trolling setups are the best. Keep in mind, it's a bottom fishing trip. What that means is you have to be able to retrieve that fish while the boat is moving because we're on our way to that next spot. Now, if you hook a big wahoo or a billfish or a monster tuna, and you can't retrieve them, we'll slow down a little bit to help you retrieve that nice trophy fish. But if you catch a bonita, um, a kingfish, you've got to retrieve that fish while the boat's moving. And uh, that's why you need the big reel. But here, let's watch the rest of this video. Does it again for the black fin tuna? Oh, good old Jason and his gaffin. <laughs> He's getting better, we promise. <laughs> but nice black fin tuna there on the 39 hour troll. We're going to get into some of your questions now and uh, talk a little bit about that. One last thing I wanted to show you guys was the Salt Strong Insider Club. Uh, for those of you not familiar with Salt Strong, you definitely want to see this. We have a way for you to get great discounts on it, too. Check this out. Uh, we're going to go to show the screen. You can pull up here. Just pull up Google. You can type in Salt Strong 
and uh, you're going to find Salt Strong's website. So you can go to their website and you can see all the options that they have here. Even if you're not a Salt Strong Insider Club member, you can still use a lot of this stuff for free. Uh, the community is my favorite part. You have to be a club member for that. But they've got tips and tactics. They've got cheat sheets. They've got courses. They've got trend analyzers, discounts on different product. They've got fishing maps. They have spot dissections. It shows you an area and then shows you how to fish it and why to fish certain areas and what fish hang out in certain areas. And the strike score tool is really crazy. We're going to show you a little bit of that too. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, guys, but I really, really like Salt Strong. I'm partnered up with them uh, because I believe in their product. We're at 280 live viewers, so we're 20 people away from a free 39-hour trip, by the way. So here is the Salt Strong community. Uh, you can see the region map. It is wild how many people use this Salt Strong community. And all these little pins are fish that have been caught. And literally, people drop pins on their fish uh, where they caught them. It's wild. So just a real quick insider look here in the club is they post a photo of what they caught. They post the area or sometimes the exact spot they caught it what was caught, where it was caught, what tackle they used, and then even some tips and tactics on how they caught it. Really cool stuff. Super positive. All these people in here, it's not like Facebook or those other fishing clubs where you can get some really big negative Nancys in there, but really like the community. And for those of you who are interested in Hubbard's Marina, and if you're an insider club member, you can go to Tampa Bay, Florida region, and they gave us our own little page here, the Hubbard's Marina Deep Sea Fishing Club. And this club has a lot of my how-to videos. I'm filming some how-tos just specifically for it. And I uh, share a lot of insider information like I will pull this one up. So you can see here a lot of detailed fishing report information shared there. And if you're interested in checking out the Salt Strong thing, go to just type in saltstrong.com and then add forward slash Hubbard. And that is the link you want to use because that's going to show you all our Hubbard's Marina specials. So you can get 50% off joining the Insider Club or 50% off the, uh, the courses that I filmed with Salt Strong. So these are on the boat like me at the wheel or at the rod showing you in person so instead of us just talking about it on sunday nights instead of you going to bass pro and watching me talk about it this is me talking about it with a rod and reel in my hand or me driving the boat how to get anchored up how to find new spots how to catch these fish so really cool insider options and you get a huge discount uh, by going this link again salt strong uh, forward slash Hubbard and I'll share that link in uh, the uh, comments for you guys so that way you can check it out after the show if you're interested there we go copied and pasted it so I'll drop it into both chats for you guys if you're interested in looking at that thing uh, so besides the Salt Strong Insider Club and all the cool courses that we filmed and again, there's some free stuff on there. So follow that link I just put in the chat and uh, you can check out their courses uh, and their club at your own leisure. Uh, but let's answer some of your questions here. One question I saw are Amberjack edible. Do people eat Amberjack? A lot of people eat Amberjack. I like Amberjack. I like uh, grilling that fresh Amberjack or my favorite is getting it smoked up I go to Nachman's Native Seafood in Reddington, and Nachman's will uh, uh, smoke up my fish for me, and I just come back later, pick it up, and it's all freshly smoked, and I have the opportunity to make some really good fish spread with it. I would use a little bit of sour cream, a lot of cream cheese, some jalapenos, some Worcestershire sauce, and uh, some celery, and it is the bomb. So I love Amberjack. Now, the common misconception is a lot of people say amberjack are wormy. There's a bunch of worms in amberjack. Why would you eat amberjack? But on our coast, on the west coast of Florida, 
we don't have the problem with wormy amberjack. On the east coast of Florida, most people don't eat amberjack on the east coast of Florida because on the east coast, those amberjack have a lot of worms in them. Whereas on our coast, on the west coast of Florida, our amberjack are a much higher quality uh, fish. They don't have the parasites that those east coast amberjack have. Now, I've never really gotten a straight answer as to why that is, uh, but it's definitely true. Uh, when you go on the east coast of Florida, 99% of the amberjacks you catch have worms in them, whereas the west coast of Florida, you don't see those worms in your amberjack. So they're good eating. They're a lot of fun to catch. They open up August 1st. They're open August, September, and October if you want a chance to go out there and catch an amberjack with us at Hubbard's Marina. Now, let's see here. What other questions? Uh, I saw someone ask about knocker rigging on that 39-hour trip. Uh, what size weights to use? The thing about knocker rig fishing is you need a large variety of uh, weights because knocker rigging, the whole idea behind it is dropping that bait slowly down towards the bottom. That way, that bait drifts to bottom very naturally and it gives those fish that are up in the water column a chance to feed. Now, you would not knock a rig fish unless the bite is slow. If the bite is slow and you're not catching fish out in the bottom, that's when you would switch to a knock a rig. Or if you've been fishing a spot for a while and you've got a big chum slick created, that's when you would want to drop down a knock a rig as well. The reason for that is when you're catching a bunch of fish on the bottom and you've got that good fish bite going on and you stay there for an hour, hour and a half, all those fish that you're catching, as you reel them to the surface, the regurgitating bait, as baits go to bottom, you get a lot of smell going in the water column and all these fish start coming out of the woodwork, coming over to the boat, see what's going on. And then also a lot of the big, big aggressive fish will come up off the bottom to try to eat those baits on the way to bottom. And that, fren that frenzy starts going on and the biggest fish are always at the top and bottom of that frenzied school. So that knocker rig allows you to present that bait to that big, huge aggressive fish very naturally because you're using a super light weight. So typically a knocker rig is about uh, an egg, it's a egg sinker on your main line and just a hook, typically about a one ounce lead or less. Now you want to use a super light lead, something that's going to get you to bottom super slowly uh, and it's going to present your bait to those fish in the water column naturally. The idea is that egg sinker needs to be able to move up and down your main line unrestricted. And typically, the lighter the lead, the more natural that bait appears. But if you've got other people on the boat, you need to use a little heavier lead so that way it's not getting way away from you. So this time of year, on these busy, busy, sold-out red snapper trips, it's almost impossible to knock a rig. Now, in May, when we had 20, 25 people on the boats, that was a great time to knock a rig. In this time of year, we do have those summertime doldrums. Will mentioned it in the video uh, about this recent 39-hour trip. They caught nice fish. They had a good catch. But that midday period where the, uh, there was no wind, there was no current, the gulf was just flat, calm, like glass, there's not a lot of stuff happening, and those fish tend to shut down, kind of get spread out. That is a great time to go to lighter tackle and use that knocker rig. Uh, to try to catch those fish. So you definitely want to have the knocker rig, but as far as let me, me telling you exactly what size weight to use is impossible because you need to have anything from quarter to half ounce to three quarters to a full ounce lead because you need the whole array of options in case the current starts running, in case there's more people on the boat, that kind of thing. Uh, but you cannot knock a rig on these busy red snapper trips. Knock a rig fishing is for your own boat when you've got two or three people on board or if the current's running perfectly for you or on a lighter load trip where you can go up to the bow and fish without anybody around you. So definitely knock a rigging is a great option, but you only do that when the bite is slow or when you've been fishing in an area for a really long time and those fish start to come up your chum slick. And you'd only do that when you have the, an area to drop back because if you drop down a super light lead and it's going up your line and your bait's going to bottom very slowly, your line gets drifted away from you quite a bit and you get tangled up real easy. So you can't do that on a busy trip. 
<clears throat> now, another question was, how is the regular 12-hour trip doing? The regular 12-hour trip that, uh, that we run on the party boat, uh, the 12-hour trip on the party boat's doing okay out there. Uh, the other part of that question was, why do we only hear about the 12-hour extreme trip and the 39-hour trip and not the regular 12-hour party boat trip? And the reason is, is just like during the year, if we're, ca we're talking about 10-hour all days and we're talking about 39 hours in private charters, but we really don't talk about our five-hour half day that much because all we're out there doing is catching the gray snapper or white grunts. We're not catching anything to write home about. The same thing applies to that regular 12-hour trip. That 12-hour party boat trip is essentially a half-day trip for red snapper. It's our shortest trip, closest to shore that we offer for red snapper. So if you want to go red snapper fishing, your best option is a 39-hour trip or a 12-hour extreme trip. If you don't have the time for a 39-hour trip, you don't have the budget for a 12-hour extreme trip, you can't book a private charter on the Flying Hub One, then you can look at doing the 12-hour party boat trip. But you've got to keep in mind that it's essentially a half-day trip for Red Snapper. You have a chance at Red Snapper. You're not going to go out there and limit out like you would on a 12-hour extreme trip or 39-hour. I've said multiple times in all my fishing reports, you start to find those Red Snapper about 100, 110, 120 foot of water. You start to find the big ones and you find the Red Snapper more consistently about 140, 150 foot of water. And you find the big Red Snapper 180, 200 foot of water and that's where you start to see the gags. Well, on our 12 hour extreme and 39 hour trip, we're fishing that 180, 200 foot of water area. On our uh, party boat half day trip or party boat 12 hour trip, we're only fishing about 110 to about 140 foot at most. So we're not fishing super deep water for super long. You have a very narrow four to six hour window of fishing time and you're only fishing about 110 to 140 foot. So we don't talk about the 12 hour party boat, the regular 12 hour day trip much because there's not much to talk about. We catch a handful of red snapper. We've done really well some trips where we've caught 40, even 45, 50 red snapper, but there's 50 people on the boat. So the guys who really know what they're doing, they sometimes limit out, but again, you're only in 110 to 140 foot, so you're catching 17, 18, 19 inch red snapper, not like those 16, 17, 18, 20 pound red snapper that we catch on our 39 hour trips or uh, 12 hour extreme trips. So that is the difference between a 12 hour extreme, a 39 hour trip, and then that party boat uh, 12 hour trip. So that's why we don't talk about it that much is just because it's not a trip we recommend. But if you're balling on a budget, you don't have all weekend for a 39 hour trip, that 12 hour party boat trip is a great option to give you a chance at those red snapper and we have been catching a few of them uh, another question was how many people go on our boats it kind of depends on the trip this is our busiest time of year besides March April during spring break June and July are the other busiest months so four months out of the 12 month year we're really really busy so if you don't like going out on a big load of people uh, with a bunch of people on the party boat you can book a private charter trip, or you can go on the eight months out of the year where we're super slow and there's only a handful of people on the boat, uh, or you can go this time of year and get a chance for red snapper. But we limit the number of people on the boat to keep the quality of the trip high. So for example, on a 39-hour uh, trip, we allow up to 50 people, but the boat's licensed for 120. We have 78 rod holders on board. We only allow up to 50 people to keep the quality of the trip high. So it kind of depends on the trip, but what you can do is go to our website. On our website, we have a uh, frequently asked questions page. So if you go to hubbardsmarina.com and you click info, you can see the facts or frequently asked questions page. And there's a huge section about how many people go on each trip and what, how can I get on a trip with the lightest load? And we also have a lot of other really commonly asked questions uh, that people find super helpful. So we have a bunch of information on the website. 
uh, whether you're looking for uh, information on one of our trips or you have a question about tackle, uh, that website hopefully will have the answer you're looking for. Now, another question I saw there uh, on the video was uh, they were having trouble with the red snapper. They're using a 100-pound test, and they're having trouble uh, getting those red snapper to bite. Well, out there in the deeper water, 180, 200 foot of water, you can use a 100-pound test and have no problem catching red snapper. Now, in 110, 120, 140 foot of water, you can't do that. They're definitely going to see that and not going to want to bite. So inside shallower waters, you want to use lighter tackle, 60, 80-pound test. Essentially, anywhere from 110 to about 140 foot of water, I'd be using 60-pound test for red snapper. Out there, 140 to about 160 foot, 80-pound test. Anything deeper than 160, I'd be fishing a 100-pound test. Uh, big dead bait, soaking them on the bottom. Uh, in 200, 250 foot of water is how you're going to catch that big monster red snapper or big gag grouper right now. So big baits, big tackle, big deep water is the way to go right now for sure. So yes, inside shallower waters, 100 pound test will scare away the snapper, but in the area we recommend fishing for red snapper, 160, 180, 200 foot of water, 100 pound test is gonna be preferred. Also, when fishing a 100 pound test with a big 10 out hook and a big huge chunk of bonita or a squid strip or a big Boston mackerel or an octopus, uh, some of those baits that we sell in our shop, that is going to help you avoid the smaller red snapper, and you're going to avoid having to deal with those smaller fish. You're only going to catch those bigger boys. Another great question was, do we sell cigar minnows? We have a ton of bait at Hubbard's Marina. We sell live pinfish. Uh, we sell live fiddler crabs, live pass crabs, and live shrimp. And then, in our bait shop, we have a bait freezer where we sell whole bonita, we sell baby octopus, we have cigar minnows, uh, we have sardines, we have squid, whole squid, we have swordfish squid, we have a little bit of everything. So we have a lot of options for you as far as frozen bait goes in our shop that you can purchase before you get on a trip. Um, now, another question I saw was, what else is caught on our 39-hour trip besides mangroves, red snapper, and grouper? Do they catch cobia, tuna, or amberjack? Well, right now, amberjack are closed, so we avoid amberjack, but amberjack are open August, September, and October. So starting August 1st, we're going to be bring home some amberjack. Tuna, we catch blackfin tuna, as you guys saw from the photos. We've been catching some blackfin tuna trolling those Rapala X wraps or flatline and form. And then cobia we catch from time to time uh, out there. They occasionally swim by the boat and we catch them with the tail hook pinfish. About 50 pound fluorocarbon and about a five aught circle hook is a great option for catching those blackfin tuna. And for those of you guys still tuned in, we just got to 300 live viewers. So someone's winning a free 39 hour trip. We're going to go ahead and give away one of those trips now, keep you guys interested. We're going to give away a five-hour half-day fishing trip now. Keep in mind, in order to win free trips, guys, you do have to comment on the Hubbard's Marina Facebook video at least one time. All you have to do is comment, go to Hubbard's Marina on Facebook, find the video, comment one time, you're entered to win. And it's totally random, just picks a live viewer's name, and you have about 10 to 15 minutes to shoot me a message on the Hubbard's Marina Facebook page, or shoot me an email to info, I-N-F-O, at hubbardsmarina.com, with your name, phone number, and a home address, your full home address, and I'll mail you out that certificate. Remember, you got to do it quick, because if you do it an hour from now, two hours from now, tomorrow, I know you weren't watching the video, and that is just not fair, because this is for those guys and gals that are watching live. So we're going to give away a five-hour half-day fishing trip here. Remember, after this, we've still got a 10-hour trip and a 39-hour trip to give away. We went over 300 live viewers, so someone's winning a free 39-hour. But first... Who's going to win a five-hour half-day for two? Who's it going to be? Let's see who it is. 
five hour half day for two goes to Daniel Rucker. Daniel Rucker, five hour half day for two. Daniel, that's pretty cool. Now, we're going to answer some more questions here and uh, then we're going to give away some more uh, free trips. So make sure you stay tuned because, again, you got to stay tuned to win. All right, so let's see here. Uh, what other questions? Uh, another question was, uh, my husband and I are planning a 39 hour uh, in August. What fish are in season at that time and how long in advance do we need to book? Well, that is a great question. Uh, we allow reservations for our trips. For example, for 2020, we're going to release our 2020 fishing schedule sometime around the 1st of December 2019. So stay tuned to our Hubbard's Marina newsletter that we send out every Friday. It's an email we send out every Friday. You can sign up uh, by going to our website. If you go to our website, go to hubbardsmarina.com, just go to our homepage, any page of our website. On the bottom right-hand corner is our newsletter sign up. You can enter your email in here and click send. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and enter my email, info at hubbardsmarina.com, and just click send, and that's going to sign you up for the email newsletter. And that's going to allow you uh, to receive that email that we send out every Friday morning that has fishing reports, what's coming up, and we tell you about uh, the schedule release date as we get closer to December. When we release that schedule December 1st for the 2020 year, people start booking immediately. Typically, the Stern uh, and some other really popular spots and some popular trips fill up very fast. For example, opening day of Red Snapper season on the 39-hour trip was sold out by like February for June trips. So definitely those 39-hour trips, they fill up fast. Once you know when, what trip you want to go on and how many people you have, book, book it. Right now, you can only book 2019 trips, but again, right around December 1st, we're going to release those 2020 trips, and you can stay tuned via our website. As far as what's in season when, you can go onto our website again, hubbardsmarina.com. When you're on our website, you can go to our webpage, click Fishing Trips, and then you can click the Fishing Tips and Tricks page. Our Fishing Tips and Tricks page has a link to the fishing seasons right there for you to stay tuned. Or you can go to Fishing Trips and click Fishing Rules and Regulations. And that's going to have a link to download the Fish Rules app. The Fish Rules app is a great way to stay tuned with what's open when. Um, but in August, we're going to be targeting everything like amberjack gag grouper red snapper and triggerfish will be closed but amberjack gag grouper mangrove snapper lane snapper we're still going to be catching some tuna the occasional kingfish uh tons of fish to catch on that 39 hour trip in august uh, another question was is there a discount for people who go frequently yes we have a loyalty program called our regulars club you can e email me at info, I-N-F-O, at hubbardsmarina.com for more information on our regulars club. Essentially, the more often you go, the higher level club you'd qualify for, the bigger discount you get on the trips. But you have to go fishing 10, 15, 20 times a year or more to qualify for those clubs. If you don't go fishing 10, 20, 30 times more or 10 15 or 20 times or more per year, uh, the best way to get discounts is wait for our Black Friday deal. Every year, Black Friday for about a, a week, week and a half, we have crazy deals going on in our shop for fish and tackle. But then we also do our Black Friday gift certificate special where you can buy gift certificates on our website and it's 20% uh, off. So you can buy $1,000 in trip fare uh, gift certificates to be used for trips uh, for only 800 bucks. So really cheap uh, or really good way to get some discounts on the trip if you don't fish enough to qualify for the regulars club. 
But again, you can email me for information on our Regulars Club, info, I-N-F-O, at hubbardsmarina.com. That Regulars Club starts uh, each beginning of the year, and it runs through December 31st. So if you signed up today for the Regulars Club, you'd only get about a five-month membership. So it doesn't really make sense to join the Regulars Club now, but I can send you the information. You can read it over. If you're interested, I can put you on the list for 2020. And we'll start those regulars club sign up sometime end of November of this year. And then you can sign up then for the full 2020 regulars club. Um, <clears throat> now, another question was about that big guy grouper that we showed. Are big grouper like that still edible? Uh, or do you have to toss them back? Big grouper are good eating. All big grouper are good eating. I mean, if they get really big, like those big Warsaws, four or 500 pounds, probably not so good eating. But I've never had a big gag, 20, 30 pounds, taste funny or taste funky or someone say you shouldn't keep that fish. Definitely that 33-pound gag fed a lot of people, and it was super good eating. Another question I saw was, how often do people get seasick on your trips? Not a lot of people get seasick on those long range trips because most people going on those 12 hour, 39 hour trips are advanced anglers. Essentially our five and 10 hour trips are our family friendly, anybody can go, everybody's welcome trips. And then the 12, 39, 44 hour trips, those are more advanced angler style trips. So our crew won't babysit you as much. They're not there to hold your hand when you're tying knots. They're going to treat you as advanced anglers. If you need help, if you want help, if you're not an advanced angler, we'll help you get there. But it's definitely a different style trip. And most people on those longer range trips don't get seasick. So it doesn't happen often that we have people seasick out there. The biggest thing I tell people is if you're worried about it, if you're thinking about it at all, take some preventative maintenance measures like Dramamine or Bone 9 before your trip. If you're going on a 39-hour trip and it leaves Tuesday, maybe start taking Dramamine Monday morning, take it again Monday night, take it again Tuesday morning, and then take a half dose right before you get on the boat, and then maybe take another half dose the morning that you get up to start fishing again, and you'll be uh, very, very uh, saturated in your bloodstream with that medication, and you shouldn't get the seasickness as much. Also, a great cure is just not thinking about it, having fun. I always tell people, slam a beer on your way out and have a good time. If you're having a good time, you're catching fish, you're not going to think about getting seasick, and typically you won't get seasick. Uh, I really think it's very mental. So if mind over matter, if you're not thinking about it, you won't get seasick, in my opinion. Now, another question I saw was, what time does the 39-hour trip leave? Well, it leaves on Sunday, Tuesday, and Friday at 3 p.m., and it returns two days later at 6 a.m. So a Sunday trip leaves at 3 p.m., it returns Tuesday at 6 a.m., Tuesday trip leaves at 3 p.m., returns Thursday at 6 a.m., Friday trip leaves at 3 p.m., returns Sunday at 6 a.m. Um, another question was, do you go straight braid to your swivel? No. Never, ever do you ever in the history of ever want to fish straight braid to your swivel. Always, always when you're bottom fishing, use a top shot or a shock leader or a leader before your leader. What you do is if you have braided line in your deep sea fishing reel, you do a line to line knot like an FG knot, an Alberto knot, a reverse Albright knot. Do a line to line knot, put monofilament line on top of your braid. It acts as a shock absorber and it assures that you don't lose fish. If you fish straight braid to your swivel, you're going to lose fish. You're not going to catch as many. You're not going to have as good of an experience. You've got to use that top shot. You're going to lose less fish. Your bait's going to look more natural. If you get tangled up, we're going to be able to undo it instead of cutting your line, especially in these busier time of year. When there's more people on the boat, you have to use that top shot. It's really, really mandatory. So we're gonna we got a few more questions here, but I want to give away a 10 hour all day for two. So a 10 hour all day for two. Remember, if your name gets picked, you have to shoot me a message or shoot me an email quickly. It's 
for people watching live. So let's see who won a 10-hour trip for two. Joey Barlow telling me that the sound was broken earlier. <laughs> Joey Barlow won a 10-hour trip for two. Congrats. Remember, if you won, you have to shoot me a message real quick, and uh, we'll get that certificate out to you. Uh, but let's finish up with these questions, and then don't forget, we still have that 39-hour trip to give away here. Another question I saw was, can we get pinfish at the dock before we leave? Yes, we offer pinfish uh, in your reservation. You must order pinfish 48 hours ahead of time or more for us to put that pinfish order in. Typically, most of the time, our pinfish order, we have them. And then if you ordered them, we definitely have your pinfish 99% of the time. However, if you do not order pinfish, it's not always the case that we have extra pinfish. So I always recommend ordering your pinfish 48 hours in advance or more for your fishing trips. But most of the time, we have some extra, but not very many. So the biggest thing is just like uh, trips, you want to make a reservation for your trip. I recommend reserving your pinfish as well. Always a good idea. Someone also said something about Will looking tired. Uh, Will, our first mate on our 39-hour trip. Yes, Will is definitely pretty tired. He's been on every 39-hour trip since the start of Red Snapper season. So every Sunday, Tuesday, Friday, 39-hour trip, Will's been there, and he's been first mate on all those trips. So He's a little tired, but he's still in there swinging hard, catching a lot of fish. Another question I saw was, uh, are, uh, are the American Red Snapper or ARS that we catch here in the Gulf of Mexico different from the ones we see down in Mexico or in the Pacific? No, the, they're the same species of fish. Red Snapper go all through the Caribbean and even in the Pacific. I was fishing the Pacific coast of Costa Rica, and I caught what the, uh, uh, the Costa Rican called a wakamaya, uh, but it's just another name for red snapper. The cool part about fishing is you can go to a bunch of different places in the world, and they fish for the same fish that we catch here a little differently or a lot differently, and they have a different name for it, but it's all the same fish. Same with mangrove snapper. A mangrove snapper is a mangrove snapper in Tampa Bay. If you go up to Panama City Beach or uh, Mississippi, they call them black snapper. If you go to the National Marine Fisheries meetings, they call them gray snapper. Uh, if you go to uh, the, the dock and talk to one of the deckhands, we call them goozers. So everybody has a different name for the same fish. It's very, very funny. It's so one interesting thing, of, uh, one of the many interesting things about fishing. Uh, another question was, uh, is the 39 hour trip a good step up for someone who's only done eight hour trips in the past and normally fishes fresh water? Typically what I always recommend people is to step up slowly. Uh, if you haven't been off fishing, offshore fishing before, try the five hour first. Once you've tried the five hour, try the 10 hour once you've done the 10 hour, maybe try the 12 hour extreme trip or the 12 hour night half or the 12 hour night mangrove snapper trip, and then try a 39 hour trip. If you don't fish a lot offshore, it's not a good idea to jump right into a 39 hour trip. Start slowly, work your way up. That way, you know you're not going to get out there and have a terrible experience for 39 hours straight and ruin yourself on offshore fishing. It's always a good idea to work your way up slowly. That way you can make sure that you don't ruin it for yourself and you can make sure that you stay hooked on offshore fishing. Now, uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, what other things do we have here? Now, I, I know there were some questions I didn't get to, guys. If I didn't get to your question live, I'll go back through and I'll try to do my best answering questions to the best of my abilities. Um, one thing I do want to mention is don't forget about our Fox 13 show. Uh, we do that Fox 13 Good Day Tampa Bay show every Friday morning at 8.15 a.m. So 8.15 every Friday morning uh, on Fox 13 News. You can tune in. 
uh, and watch that uh, fishing show. If you don't have cable like me, you can just get on handy dandy Google and type in Fox 13. And once you Google Fox 13, you'll see their news, the Fox 13 news website. And you can go and click live. And that lets you watch the news live right from their website. So even if you don't have cable uh, or you're not in an area that has cable, you can always pull it up on your smartphone, pull it up on your uh, computer, and watch that uh, Friday morning. Uh, again, Friday mornings at 8.15 a.m. Uh, is that Good Day Tampa Bay uh, good catch segment that we do with Russell Rhodes. So pretty cool little show if you haven't caught that yet. Uh, also, don't forget about our live stream show. Obviously, you're watching it now. Hopefully, you enjoyed it, and hopefully, we'll see you next week. Don't forget to uh, go to that event link. I'm going to pop that event link in the chat for you right now. Check out that event link. Click going or interested for me. I'd really appreciate it. That helps spread the word about this event. We do them every Sunday night, 8.30 p.m. We'll see you next week. But don't forget, we still have to give away a 39-hour trip. So who's going to win that 39-hour trip? We're going to find out shortly. I'll see you uh, at Fox 13 this coming Friday. We'll see you next week for the live show. Hopefully, you guys are going to come join us for a 39-hour fishing trip. we got tons of room on them. And uh, let's see who won that 39-hour trip, and then I'm going to bed. It's been a long day. So, 39-hour trip. Who won the free 39-hour trip? Drum roll, please. 39-hour goes to Walter Reese. From Vidalia, Georgia. Walter Reese. Mr. Walter Reese. Again, if you got called to win one of those free trips, you got to shoot me a message on our Hubbard's Marina Facebook page or shoot me an email to info at hubbardsmarina.com. Hopefully, we'll see you around Hubbard's Marina soon for some deep sea fishing. Hopefully, we'll see you next week for another chance to win more free fishing trips. Tune into our page every morning for our live stream updates. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube, like our Facebook page, check us out on Instagram, and remember, if you're too busy to go fishing, you're just too darn busy. We'll see you next week, guys. Thanks for watching tonight. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I appreciate it. Thanks for spending your Sunday night with us.